right, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are Onus Engineering. My name is Daniel Perez. Darian, Oliver, Jordan, Everett. All right, and our capstone project is on a beam mounted jib crane. Okay, so as far as the background of our project scope, uh, we wanted our crane to rotate on the Y axis. Uh, it's going to be directly mounted onto the webbing on the side of an I beam here. Uh, we wanted to minimize the cost by choosing a material that was strong enough to hold our load, but also not too costly. Uh, it's going to be applicable for tight spaces and short distances. Um, one problem that we were running into was simply being restrained to the side of an I-beam on the webbing, uh, but our dynamic design layout helped us out for ease of use with that. You know, one part changes, the whole thing changes, so we don't have to go one by one and fix everything. Uh, we want to have a rated load of about one ton. Um, when we first started out, that was only at about 500 pounds, so through optimization of the weld and choosing strong materials, we got that up to about one ton, and we're going to try and get higher if we can. Okay, so as far as what's on the market and how our design deviates from all these here, you have your floor-mounted cranes, wall-mounted cranes, cantilever and tie-rod cranes. Uh, you know, some of these take up a lot of space, especially the floor-mounted, and in applications where there's not enough space, like construction, there might not even be a wall there to mount the crane onto. Uh, ours help fit into those tight spaces. Um, and over, over here in the first example, on the floor-mounted crane, Without uh, the trolley or the hoist, that costs about $5,000. So just to get that transported over to your company, set in place, you know, create space for it, that's a lot of money. So we're trying to cut costs by our design here. And now Darren will talk more about the design. So on our project design, if you look at our picture, that is our call to work bottle at, the mo uh, at that moment. So we did change it, and you'll see it in our uh, design layout. Essentially, our key points for this design is to have dynamic layout, as Dano pointed out. This is if we have any trouble that we want to modify our design, it does so uh, operate here in our plane. And the next slide, uh, this is an all welded beam. There can be no bolts, excluding with the uh, bolted angle iron at the end to stop the trolley, the, the trolley from moving. Uh, other than that, we meet the standards for ASME, OSHA, AMSI, and other regulations that uh, require for like. Uh, inspection of voice and inspections of crane. Now in our design, this is our assembly drawing. For our assembly, we do have all the welds and the part pieces of how they're going to be arranged in our uh, design. Now, after doing different types of weld types, we have come down to uh, 3 16 and 16 inch throat size welds, and this is going to be the same throughout all welds into our design, this will be for the D-Buck welds, our Blade welds, our elk size welds, and others that are in this assembly. Uh, while we were doing our FDA uh, weld analysis, we did notice that a lot of our strain, if you look on the top, we have up here where the rod and the uh, S-beam is. That's where uh, a lot of the stress was getting caused. So this is where we extended the beam, uh, the beam out further, about another three inches to uh, consume the rest of that rod, in which it brings the stress in another position, which I'll uh, discuss further on. Now, with that being said, when we noticed that part of the FDA analysis, uh, that allowed us to go back to our uh, dynamic layout, change the uh, extension of the beam, and since it was in place the way, uh, the way we wanted it and the way the IDW was made, in about five minutes, all the change and it's fixed by the way. So for further iteration, which we have planned, uh, it's only going to consume minutes rather than hours of rearrangement, at drawing, reanalyzing, and so on. Uh, this assembly does have press fit uh, for the bushings. It does have uh, welds all the way throughout. And our tolerances do follow the gold standard ISO 2758 MK. This is only for linear cuts and assembly. Now for our fabrication, this is our uh, fabrication drawing for the force fabricators at any shop when we go to a small scale, uh, which we'll discuss uh, further on, uh, later on in the presentation. In this model, we can see that we have about 600 kilograms uh, of mass on this uh, design, which converts to about uh, 1.3 uh, yeah, thousand uh, pounds. So because of that size, we decided to scale it down and do a uh, smaller model to bring to the end of capstone. Uh, with this, we also, as I said earlier, follow the tolerance uh, ISO 2768MK. And then also for the plasma cuts for pieces like number seven, number nine, uh, we inform the fabricator that we need 
partition space at the end of the griffin where it's being uh, loaded. And the force is applied on the pipe on the very right side at the angle iron. So that's where uh, the highest moment is going to be for the beam. We rated it to be for it to go one ton. But with Jordan's calculation with the moment, we wanted to put 8.25 tons onto the force to get the beam. What's the safety factor of five? And with the with the type of weld, which is a V-butt weld, that's the uh, calculation that Jordan uh, conducted on the on the end of the force. And um, the max stress of the beam uh, became 923.4 uh, megapascals. And with the uh, material of the beam, the 836 structural steel it would go up to 70, uh, 79.3 gigapascals. So we have a huge gap and we could uh, really test more on the stress analysis, but it depends on the moment uh, simulation that we're going to do uh, in the next slide, I believe. Now just make one comment. Uh, even though our shear stress is 79.3 gigapascals, which is a multiple of 79 essentially to what our strain is at the moment, we do have to consider our stress strain curve to see how it starts meshing and how it starts performing after so many cycles. And this is a GIF of the of the stress on the beam. As you can see, the stress over here is being conducted as it moves down. And this is a closer look on the stress, which looks fairly pretty good. And this is uh, where most of the stress is being conducted on the, on the beam. OK, so in addition to the inventor uh, FDA analysis, we're trying to work with SolidWorks uh, motion analysis simulation. Uh, we're having a little bit of trouble transporting the inventor file into SOLIDWORKS. Um, we have a couple options. We could either import the parts one by one from invention into SOLIDWORKS and make them and then therefore perform the motion analysis. Or we could put the whole thing into uh, SOLIDWORKS and replace the parts that were like broken. It was giving us a couple errors saying they were locked in place or something like that. So we're still working with SOLIDWORKS and hopefully we can get that motion analysis simulation done by the final presentation. In this program, uh, we use to conduct a structural analysis. Uh, well, SciSIF is a structural analysis and design software we use to conduct a beam analysis on it. Um, as you see here, this is going to be uh, the main beam, our S beam, that's going to be carrying the majority of our load. Um, there's a free body diagram with our um, one ton load right there. Um, and this is going to be our deflection uh, graph right here. And through industry standards for deflection, um, it is linked over 360. And with that calculation, uh, for our design, it has a maximum deflection of uh, about, five, uh, about five sixteenths of an inch. Um, as what you see here, it's way under from what we have. So we're going to clear it there. Um, and here, we have our bending moment. And you see that majority of the bending moment stress is going to be where our weld is going to be. Um, is connected over here to our uh, three inch rod. And then right here, we're going to have a, a stress result uh, from our transversal shear stress and our overall max and normal bending stress. And this one, we're not completely done with the analysis on uh, this beam. This beam is going to be the one that's going to be connected onto the uh, connecting beam. And then for this one right here, this beam is going to be the bottom beam, which is going to be about a foot. And the load down right here is going to be from the flat bar that is going to be basically a point joint support uh, from the uh, main S beam. And same thing over here, the same standard applies to this. Um, so it's way under uh, for our deflection, so we are good there. And then same thing again with our uh, bending moment. Majority of the uh, stress is going to be on the top right there. And then this is going to be our stress result for that beam. Okay, so these are our, our weld calculations. Um, so for this, it's going to be a V-butt weld right here. So we're going to grind down both sides and fill this part in with weld. Um, for our calculation right here, we're doing it on this circle right up here. Uh, that's going to be our weakest point uh, right there. And we calculate our lava load to be about 16,000 pounds. We'll love it out. So with our safety factor, we'll be very good with that. Um, we're going to get that one ton. Okay, and this is the weld. Um, that's going to fit inside the I-beam. It's already going to be there. So we're going to cut off the top here and bottom here and fit it right in there. 
Um, before our calculations, we just did it as if it, as if it was just going straight onto a wall. Um, and for our calculations, we did it as if it was just one beam going out 12 feet, as you can see right here. Um, we were a lot more, uh, we did a lot more calculations on this one, um, just because of how different the weld is. The other one is just a circle on this one, and you know, going inside of a beam. So I just want to be more, uh, more accurate with it. Um, but yeah, even with this, we were uh, well within our limits. So this is the bill of material. As you can see, we have 10 different pieces as part of our design. Our main material is going to be steel. And this is the cost that we are trying to do, the estimated price comparable. Our total overall estimated cost right now is $1,696, a lot better than the 5000 that the other uh, cranes would be so this is our project scope. Uh, scope. I mean, our project uh, um, schedule. And right now we are at uh, the fabrication. We're just waiting for the parts to come in, and we just fabricate the uh, scaled model that we're going to present in our final presentation, as well as we are waiting for a. Um, um, the PE camp from IT engineering, as well as uh, I guess that's all. And then we need to finish the simulations that we have uh, doing right now. So I'm Miss Williams.